Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Spurs Up Show, the best Gamecocks podcast on the internet. Today is Friday, December the 4th, 2020. On today's show, I break down tomorrow's game. Gamecocks traveling to Lexington, Kentucky. Can South Carolina close their 2020 regular season on a high note and salvage a victory over the Kentucky Wildcats. I'll break down the game. Also, give my updated thoughts on the coaching search as we head into the weekend. A lot to get into here on a Friday, guys. And it's all brought to you by our friends over at Upstate Movers Group. Guys, Upstate Movers Group, superior moving service. They bring care and attention other companies can't offer because they're just too busy maintaining trucks and profiting off of them instead of focusing on service. Guys, service is what separates Upstate Movers Group from the competition. They're not a trucking company. They are a moving services company, and they're also employee-owned co-op. The movers are paid twice the industry average, and everyone on the crew is just as invested in the success of the project as you are. They have dedicated professional crew members, and they offer black glove service. They offer end-to-end packing services, custom crating and packaging for special items, and cleaning services as well. They are founded by Greenville Natives and University of South Carolina alumni, guys, so Gamecock owns small business. Gamecocks helping Gamecocks here on the Spurs Up show. They also offer 20 years of project management and moving experience and they can offer logistics and solutions that traditional moving companies simply do not have the skills for guys whether you're in the upstate of south carolina or across the state of south carolina be sure to check out my friends at upstatemoversgroup.com they're also on social media at upstate movers group for all of your moving needs again we all know in moving it can be a pain in the butt it can be a hassle you lose things you break things whatever you just don't want to do it right Give my friends over at Upstate Movers Group a call again, whether you're in the upstate or across the state of South Carolina, for all of your moving needs. Go check them out at Upstate Movers Group on social media. And, of course, their website, upstatemoversgroup.com. That's upstatemoversgroup.com. The show is also brought to you by our friends over at Southern Oaks Remodeling. Guys, locally and family-owned, over 15 years of experience. They specialize in roofing, windows, doors, siding, and additions, and they're serving the greater Columbia area, guys. Now is the perfect time with the holiday season, with Christmas coming up. Stop putting off that remodeling project. Get it done. Why not? Treat yourself. Southern Oaks Remodeling is the way to go. You can find them on social media. Hey, they're on Instagram. If you want to see any examples, by the way, I was taking a look at their Instagram page today. Absolutely awesome stuff, guys. You can see all the projects they did in the past. You can see exactly what they're able to do. And again, roofing, windows, doors, siding, additions. They can do it all. So again, check them out on social media, Instagram, Facebook. You know the drill. Of course, their website, and if you have any questions, want to get an estimate, whatever it may be, give them a call, 803-899-0284. That's 803-899-0284. The show is also brought to you by our friends over at Yardware. Guys, Yardware is a veteran-owned and operating company licensed by the University of South Carolina, selling must-have Carolina yard and wall signs. Guys, these signs are made out of 12-gauge laser-cut steel, and they come in both garnet and black. Football season's in full swing. Basketball is here. But more importantly, we are exactly three weeks away from Christmas, guys. That's not a long time. you got to get your Christmas shopping done now. Why not get someone, a Gamecock fan in your life, a Gamecock Yardware sign? Guys, you can check them out on social media, at Yardware Signs. And you can order your sign today at YardwareSigns.com. That is YardwareSigns.com. Again, guys, this is a must-have for any Gamecock fan in your life. Whether it's a relative, your friend, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, your children, whatever it may be. If they're a Gamecock fan, they're absolutely going to love their Yardware sign. Guys, you can find them on social media, like I said, at Yardware Signs or YardwareSigns.com to order yours today. Again, YardwareSigns.com. That is YardwareSigns.com. Guys, finally, the show is brought to you by our friends over at MyBookie. Between the NFL, college football, college basketball, and more, there's no shortage of games to watch. And with thousands of lines available on all your favorite sports and events, you can turn your game day into payday with my bookie now if you're the type of person likes to back the big favorites consider putting a couple in a parlay for a much bigger payout not only do parlays make meaningless games exciting but more importantly they give you a chance to turn ordinary bets into a real money maker guys of course don't forget the underdogs right they have a ton of value the thing about college football the nfl college basketball of course underdogs really never are dogs right every team truly has a chance to win and you do as well game spreads championship futures and player prop bets, it's never too late to get on the action and start turning your sports knowledge into actual cash in your wallet. Guys, you can sign up today at mybookie.ag, and when you do, use the promo code GAMECOCKS to claim a deposit match dollar for dollar all the way up to a 1000 bucks. Guys, it's a win-win. It's a no-brainer. It's a bonus designed to give you a little help and a head start in your winning season. So, guys, again, that's promo code GAMECOCKS, promo code GAMECOCKS, for you to claim your bonus when you make your deposit. Stack UFC cards, college football, NFL, college basketball, 
all the major sports and more. Sign up today to begin your winning season exclusively at my book. Let's get it. up show as always appreciate you guys tuning in got a lot to get into here on a friday obviously prediction for tomorrow's game gamecocks taking on the kentucky wildcats and man it's crazy how the season just flies by i know i talked about this yesterday but final game of the 2020 season the final prediction show at least for the regular season for south Carolina football in 2020 um a lot to get into also updates on the coaching search of course again you can't go throughout a single show without talking about the coaching search and things of that nature but guys Again, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you all had a fantastic week. Obviously, here on a Friday, TGIF, we are exactly three weeks away from Christmas, by the way. In, in case you're counting on the days, we're 21 days from Christmas, which means we are three weeks away from my birthday. Shameless plug. I didn't know if you guys knew that. I'm a Christmas baby. My birthday's on Christmas. It'll be the big 3-0 for your guy over here. Um, the big dirty 30 for uh, for old C Philly. So looking forward to that. But we are three weeks away from Christmas and everybody's scrambling right now getting the Christmas shopping done. And uh, we're in the holiday season. I, I think, again, I may have said this the other day, but it's it's gotten to the point. I, I don't know what it is. Obviously, with the content that we make and stuff like that, we put out in the podcast. I'm very structured with do this on this day, this on that day, especially right now with football season and stuff like that. But we are creeping closer and closer to that time of year where like you don't even you wake up and you're like what day is it like is it Tuesday is it Friday is it Sunday like you just have no idea you know what I mean like and I don't know if it's because the time change which I absolutely hate by the way getting dark at like 5 15 it's the absolute worst whoever created daylight savings time you can kick rocks but uh no it's weird it's getting to that point and I'm waking up I'm like is it Thursday is it Friday is it when like you're like losing track of what day it is but again guys Thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you're all doing well. Hope you had a fantastic week, and I'm very excited to break down this game tomorrow in Lexington, Kentucky. One thing before we get going as well, I know you're probably asking, I'll touch on it here just a little bit, but you're asking, Chris, what about the basketball game? I'm going to talk about that a little bit here as well, but really going to use this show to mainly focus on the football game just because the final football game of the 2020 season. So I, I don't want to take away from the football game, talking about that, giving my predictions for it, but South Carolina playing Houston tomorrow on the road, a top 10 matchup. Can the Gamecocks get the upset? That's going to be a big one. And obviously I'll be able to talk about that tomorrow and cover that as well when we're doing our pregame show live from overtime. So if you guys are in the city, come on out to overtime bar and grill uh, 6.30 to 7, the pregame show. Then of course, kickoff at 7.30, but tip off for men's basketball at six o'clock. But again, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Hope you all had a fantastic week. Let's go ahead and dive into it. South Carolina going on the road to take on the Kentucky Wildcats final game of the 2020 season. And a crazy stat that was brought up earlier this week, South Carolina and Kentucky are the only two teams playing their 10th game of the season this weekend. I think that's really crazy and intriguing. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure I saw that coming. Like, it's kind of wild when you think that South Carolina has not had a game impacted by COVID yet, especially when you look at South Carolina's roster and you look at the amount of guys that are out with injury and opt-outs and you got some COVID guys and you're like, man, does South Carolina have the 53 guys to play? And I don't think South Carolina does. I'll be honest with you. I don't think South Carolina probably has the 53 I think Mike Bobo and that crew are just saying, you know what, screw it. Let's just push through. Let's push on and get over, get this season over with. Uh, you know, you don't have, you don't, you don't have Will Muschamp around anymore. I, I think that's probably, that's probably what's going on behind closed doors. They're like, you know what, screw it. We're going to push through this and uh, and be done with it. But either way, South Carolina going to Kentucky to take on the Wildcats. You know, it's interesting in this in, in this season and in this game in the preseason when I looked at this game. I had this at, as a toss-up, and I had it as a loss for South Carolina, believe it or not. 
Um, obviously, Gamecocks breaking the streak last year at home. Really a dominating win, 24-7 to win, but that was before Lynn Bowden took over at quarterback for Kentucky. But in the preseason, I actually had South Carolina losing this game to Kentucky. And one of my biggest reasons, and I challenge you, if you're ever bored one day, or if you're sitting there right now listening to the show and you want to test what I'm telling you, go look at the series history with South Carolina and Kentucky, specifically the games played in Lexington. I'm talking about go look at it all the way back to the 90s, right? South Carolina, for whatever reason, has never played well in Lexington. Even the years that the Gamecocks were beating Kentucky every single year, the games were always close I mean they were always close I think South Carolina's largest margin of victory was 21 I want to say in 2012 but outside of that I'm not sure the Gamecocks have won a game by double digits in Lexington like it's been it's been tough sledding at Kroger Field or at, at whatever the name of the field was beforehand it's been tough sledding at Kentucky for whatever reason for South Carolina and I had this game picked as a loss. For that reason, you know, I had South Carolina at finishing up at three and seven. Um, and I, I'm sure you guys remember the predictions. But I've been shocked, to be honest with you, how bad Kentucky has been this year. I, it's been baffling how bad the Cats have been. <clears throat> you know, we talked about that yesterday as far as the offensive struggles for Kentucky. They cannot pass the football, averaging, I think, 115 passing yards per game, which is just abysmal. They have not broken 300 yards of offense, I think, in like the last six weeks or something like that. Like, it has been really tough sledding for Kentucky offensively. Now, defensively, I think they have a defense that can compete with some of the best in the SEC, especially in that secondary. The secondary is the strength of Kentucky's defense. But again, coming in this final game, I had this picked as a loss in the preseason. And you take a look at the South Carolina side of things. And I talked about the top storylines yesterday, but the one thing I did not harp on enough that I want to touch on here, the race for 1,000 yards for Kevin Harris. And and he's going to be a huge focal point in this football game because if the Gamecocks have any chance of ending their season on a high note, Kevin Harris has got to go off. Only needs 72 to get to 1,000. I think he'll get that much, much more. But I wonder what the offensive game plan for South Carolina will be like. Because I don't think we got a a real taste of what the capabilities are of this offense with Luke Doty, especially last week against Georgia. I mean, the the defense that you faced that Georgia threw on the field is one of the best, if not the best defense in the entire SEC and arguably one of the best in the country. And, you know, you threw Luke Doty to the Wolves necessarily last week. You threw him to the Dogs. You threw Luke Doty to the dogs last week. And I I thought for a true freshman, a youngster, you know, with the limited resources he had, no shy Smith, didn't have any great protection. I thought he played decently. I I thought he played fairly well, to be honest with you. Um, Especially throwing the footballs. We all know 18 for 22. Had the one pick, but 190 yards and a touchdown. I mean, pretty good day from your true freshman quarterback. Like I said, the strength of this Kentucky team is their secondary on the defensive side. I think it's no secret South Carolina will be stingy in the run game and commit to the run game and get Kevin Harris going. Now, what is the status of Shai Smith? I think that could play a huge role in this game. Again, especially when we're talking about our true freshman quarterback and Luke Doty. The more weapons you can get him, the better. I mean, obviously, it's just going to help the kid out. Can South Carolina do anything, though, in the passing game? If Shai Smith doesn't play, and maybe even if he does, but he's banged up, Can South Carolina get anything going in the passing game to be balanced? I mean, obviously, we we know this this Gamecocks team is what it is right now. It wants to run the football. Offensive line has been shoddy at best in pass pro, and now you've got a true freshman quarterback. And the troubles don't stop there for South Carolina on the defensive side. Now you're without Ernest Jones, who I would say was the true heartbeat and leader of that defense. Who steps up on the defensive side? It's crazy this this game, this scenario, South Carolina is in defensively, it reminds me a lot of 2018 when the Gamecocks played Clemson. And it was like your entire second and third team guys were your starters. I think right now South Carolina's playing with, they're going to start two guys in tomorrow's game that started week one against Tennessee. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's brutal. It's brutal on that defensive side. Granted, I think there's a lot of good young talent, especially in the secondary on that defensive side. But you're without a a lot of your top guys, basically all of them. 
Offensively for Kentucky, Terry Wilson has struggled. Now, they've got good a good stable of backs. Chris Rodriguez leading the way. Uh, Cavassier Smoke, Asim Rose. I think they're – obviously, they're going to want to run the football. They haven't been able to throw it all season. They're going to want to want to run the football, no question. This week, I gave my best bet. The over 48. I think over 48 and a half is what I took it at. Now it's, I think, 47 and a half. And you might ask yourself, Chris, why? Like, why? You just talked about how bad these teams have been offensively. I think you're going to see a really spirited performance from both teams. I think it's going to be a really competitive game. And I think this will be one of the more fun games of the 2020 season, to be honest with you. I, I, I think this is going to be a really fun football game. You know, I was worried about the culture and the way that this South Carolina team would approach these games, these last three, and fight, fight, scratch, and claw, and play for the name on the front of the jersey and on the back. And I, I think we've seen that has been well established. No matter who the 22 are on the field, because all we need is 22, right? All we need is 22. No matter who those 22 are on the field, you're going to see these guys give a max effort. And Mike Bobo, I think, has done a great job, by the way, resonating that and talking about that and, and, and conveying that message. And I think you're going to see these guys put out a max effort, no doubt. I think Kevin Harris, I don't know what it is. Because, again, I picked this game as a loss in the preseason. And South Carolina's a double-digit underdog. And, and I'll tell you guys, when that line first came out, I couldn't believe it. Because, listen, with all the troubles that South Carolina has had, and we all know, we're very well aware of the troubles the Gamecocks have had. I mean, Kentucky's been a train wreck. And I know they've gotten beaten in the last few weeks by some High-quality competition. I'm not trying to take that away from them. But Kentucky's been a train wreck, guys. They've been an absolute train wreck this year. I really can't believe how bad UK has been, especially on the offensive side. You know, you thought Terry Wilson was a guy who maybe was going to take that next step and at least be a solid option for the Wildcats. And that just simply has not happened. I think most people... And you know, it's interesting. Most people, I think, don't even care about the result of this game. And I know that sounds crazy, <clears throat> but most people are con just concerned with the coaching search right now. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be Napier, going to be Beamer, whatever. But I don't know. I, I have a weird feeling about this game tomorrow. And I don't know. I really don't know why. I, I cannot put my finger on it. But what we're witnessing right now on the offensive side for South Carolina, the running back position, is nothing short of a magical season from Kevin Harris. Kevin Harris has the opportunity to eclipse 1,000 yards in a 10-game schedule, all SEC schedule. Folks, that's, I mean, that's beyond words, beyond comprehension for me. I thought there was no chance that could happen. And again, when you look at this game, I truly don't know what it is, why I have this good gut feeling going in this game. Because I do. I do. I think this is going to be a damn battle, back and forth fight between the Gamecocks and the Wildcats. Yes, South Carolina has issues defensively. Yes, South Carolina is starting a true freshman quarterback for the second week in a row. Yes, the South Carolina offensive line has struggled in pass protection. But I just don't see Kentucky as world beaters, guys. I, I just don't see the Wildcats as world beaters. I don't know what it is. <clears throat> I, I think it's insane that Kentucky's a double-digit favorite. I simply don't see it. And, you know, this will be the third game, basically, that Luke Doty will be getting to play. And I think getting Luke out there against Georgia, letting him get his feet wet against Georgia, is going to pay dividends coming in this one. Because, again, give Kentucky all the credit you want defensively. They ain't the dogs. They ain't Georgia. This ain't Georgia's defense. I'm expecting a back-and-forth game. Again, one of the better games of the year, I think, honestly. I know that sounds crazy. I know weather might play a factor and make this one a, a knockout, drag-out fight, whatever. I'm expecting a back-and-forth fourth-quarter game. 
And yes, I, I think there will be times where we scratch our heads in this game and think, oh my God, what is going on? Especially on the defensive side. Because again, you're without Ernest Jones now. Who's going to step up and make plays for you? Bottom line, who's, who, who is going to make plays defensively? Who's going to stop that three-headed monster at running back for Kentucky? But you know what? You can give me Chris Rodriguez. You can give me Asim Rose. You can give me Cavassier Smoke. You can add up all three of those guys. And I don't think they equal what Kevin Harris will give you tomorrow night at Kroger Field. Again, I don't know what it is. Maybe I just want to be optimistic and pick a win for the last game of the season. But you know what? I just don't see Kentucky as this, this world beater team. And again, I don't see South Carolina that way either, of course. But I think the Gamecocks, their last to rob the 2020 season, come out, play inspired. They're fired up. They want to go out on a high note. I think Luke Doty builds off the performance we saw him have against Georgia. I think he goes to Nick Muse early and often. If Now, if Shai Smith can go, I think that will be a major boost for this offense. But either way, I think Luke Doty continues his success through the air to Nick Muse. I think you see Luke Doty run the football a lot, though. And I think Kevin Harris easily gets to that 1,000-yard mark. I could see Kevin easily going for 150-plus, maybe 200. Honestly, I, I think they're going to run him early, often, and he's going to have a big game for you. And again, I see this being a back-and-forth game. I don't think either defense will have much success, and it's going to come down to who can get that final stop in the fourth quarter, and I think that team will be South Carolina. I've got the Gamecocks going on the road, pulling the upset win over the Kentucky Wildcats. Give me South Carolina 27, Kentucky 24, guys. I, I don't know what it is. I'm feeling it. I feel good. I know everything. Everything is saying South Carolina should not win this football game, and I think that's why I'm picking them to win this football game. Again, the season's a wash, whatever. Everybody's focused on the coaching search. Nobody's giving South Carolina a chance. You're a double-digit underdog. You've never played well in Lexington, which to me, you put that all together, that spells a Gamecock W. The Gamecocks come through when you least expect it, and I think they come through tomorrow night at Kroger Field, 27 to 24. Again, it won't be pretty at times, I think, for sure. I don't think it'll I think it'll be ugly at times. But again, Kentucky has their own issues too. Kentucky has their own issues too. And I think if South Carolina, if nothing else defensively, can make Kentucky one dimensional, which I mean, they basically made themselves one-dimensional. They're throwing for 115 yards a game. Stack the box. Make Terry Wilson beat you. Make him beat you. You know, if he does, tip your cap to him. If he beats you, tip your cap to him. But I don't think he will. And then again, offensively, run the football, run the football, run the football. Get creative with Luke Doty and Kevin Harris. You've got two great athletes there in the backfield. Pass when you have to but run the ball, keep it on the ground. Going to be a cold night in Lexington. Going to be a great night to pound the rock. But again, I think it's going to be a fourth quarter game. It will come down to the wire. And I've got the Gamecocks finding a way to improbably get the job done. 27 to 24, I've got South Carolina beating Kentucky tomorrow night at Kroger Field. So we'll see what happens, guys. Again, that's what I've got. I don't know what it is. I've got a good feeling and I can't really explain it. <laughs> I can't really explain it. You know, I, I had no optimism and no hope going into last weekend's game against Georgia. But you know what? When it comes to this one, I feel good. I, I feel good. I think South Carolina can have some, some success against Kentucky. I think Kevin Harris will absolutely go off tomorrow, and South Carolina will find a way to ride into victory. And that defense is going to make one big play in this game. I'll predict that. This defense will make one big play to turn the tide of this football game. But again, I got South on a 27 to 24. So again, guys, appreciate you tuning in. Before we go, I do want to give some thoughts on the coaching search. And of course, tomorrow's game, South going to take it on Houston at their place, a top 10 matchup. Let's first talk about the coaching search. Um, because again, this, I don't think we can go through a show the rest of this year, if you will, or until this is resolved without talking about it. And I posted this on social media on Thursday afternoon. As we go into the weekend, this is going to be a huge weekend for the coaching search because, again, the cat's out of the bag. It's not really a secret. Billy Napier is going to have a follow-up interview in person tomorrow. 
And here's my biggest thing with that, guys. If the two sides are willing to meet, to me that says a couple things. Number one, Billy Napier wants this job. Okay, he, he wants the job. But number two, what it says is both sides are willing to negotiate and meet somewhere in the middle. And if that's the case, and if they're bringing Billy in for a second interview, that tells me South Carolina wants Billy Napier. Again, I think Shane Beamer is still the leader in the clubhouse right now. And if I had to bet, I'd probably bet my money on Shane Beamer still, but it's coming down to the wire. You know, I, 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 I thought a few days ago this was Shane Beamer's to lose. Now I'm thinking this race is a lot closer than I once thought it was. So it'll be very interesting to see what comes out of Saturday, not just from the game, not just from the football game, the basketball game, but this whole coaching search thing, this whole coaching search saga. What happens with that? Um, how does Napier's meeting go? I've been told there's also going to be a follow-up call with Shane Beamer. I like a follow-up interview, if you will. How will that go? But I think it's going to come down definitely to one of those two guys. So, you know, I think by no means is Billy Napier out of it yet. I think by no means is it a guarantee Shane Beamer's the next head football coach, which at one point I thought it was. But I will say this too, guys. I'll be happy with either option. Um... I think there's upside to both guys. There, there's absolutely cons to both. But there's pros and cons to both. And I think there's massive upside to both guys as well. And I I understand the entire thing with Napier. He worked at Clemson, and that, that's a really tough pill for Gamecock fans to swallow. But, dude, look, Clemson's done the same thing. They hired Chris Rump, who played at South Carolina. They, <clears throat> they hired Brad Scott, who was the head coach at South Carolina. Both sides have done this. So don't let where he coached previously stop you from hiring the right guy. If you think Billy Napier is the right guy, hire him. Pull the trigger. But it sounds like to me, guys, and I'll say this in closing on on the coaching search stuff. It sounds like to me there is a little bit of division at the top amongst the decision makers, amongst the people who will be making this call. And from what it sounds like to me, there are people who want Beamer and there are people who want Napier. And who do they decide on? You know, that's the multi-million dollar question right there. Now, I've seen some people commenting saying, oh, you got to hire Beamer for recruiting. You got to get ahead of recruiting. You know, Napier has a couple more weeks with his job in Louisiana. Guys, with all due respect to this recruiting class, you're making a hire and a decision that's going to affect you for the next 10 years is your goal, right? I mean, you'd love, you want the next head coach to be here that long. You do. So the recruiting class of 2021, like this recruiting cycle is important as it is. It's really not that important in the grand scale of hiring your next head football coach. So if they feel like Billy Napier is the guy, they're going to say to hell with the recruiting class. To hell with it. Bottom line. But I think certainly, you know, I I think it's no secret it's going to come down to Billy Napier and Shane Beamer. Who will that be? I don't know. I would expect certainly by this time next week, I'd say probably mid-next week, we're going to have a decision. We're going to know who the next head football coach is. And, again, I'll be there with you guys every step of the way. But, uh, you know, I I still think Beamer's the leader in the clubhouse. I do. But – Billy Napier is not out of this thing yet. And I just feel like, you know what, guys, if if the meeting tomorrow goes well and really finance, I, I talked to you guys about this yesterday. Financials is going to go a long way in this decision. So the meeting tells me if Billy Napier is willing to come down, I mean, you know, there, there, I think there's a decent chance you could see Billy Napier as the Gamecocks next head coach. So take it for what it's worth. We'll see what happens, but uh, yeah, this thing gets crazier by the day, man. It, it, this is very interesting stuff. The rumors, day after day, the rumors never fail to come through and 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 make things interesting for us all, for sure. Um, last thing in closing, guys, like I said, these Friday shows especially, but we're going to really shift gears into basketball, probably starting, I would say, 
next week. I say next week, but there's only one game next week. Then we get in the Christmas holiday. But after football, after all the football madness is over, we're going to shift gears fully into basketball. But I do want to highlight tomorrow's game, 10th-ranked Houston. The Gamecocks going on the road to take on the Houston Cougars. This game's all going to come down to guard play. We, we all know that. With South Carolina, it's going to be the same thing every week or every game, right? If you don't get a positive performance, if you don't get an ex- exceptional performance, I should say, out of Jermaine Kuznard, A.J. Lawson, Trey Hannibal, Justin Manaya, T.J. Moss, if your guard play is not there, the Gamecocks have no chance. And again, guard play is what wins in college basketball. And as bad, as brutal as that Liberty loss was the first game of the season, hey, you beat Houston, nobody's going to give a damn. Great opportunity for Frank Martin's squad, by the way. A great opportunity here. And you kind of feel like at some point you're going to have to steal a non-conference win, especially to make up for that Liberty game because you got Houston in this one. Hey, then you got Wofford, and, and and that's no walk in the park, bro. You could argue Wofford's the best basketball team in this state right now. So, on the road, out of Houston, big opportunity. We saw South Carolina last year go on the road and beat a Virginia. Could this game tomorrow be this team's Virginia game? Could this be their big upset in the non-conference? Will be really interesting to see. Again, it's all going to come down to me for guard play. I, I think South Carolina does have the opportunity. If you get Kusnard and Lawson hot, you never know what could happen. But, uh, yeah, should be a lot of fun to watch. But, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Again, another successful week, another successful Friday. Thank you so much for the love support. You guys continue to tune in, show your love. I, I, I just truly do appreciate it. Again, we continue to set record-setting numbers and uh, – You know, excited for this month, excited for what the future holds, and really excited for 2021. But, guys, again, thank you so much for tuning in. Go Cox, beat Kentucky, and we'll talk to you on Monday.